Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering the methods of studying cells topic of the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. All right, so what you need to know is what magnification is um, and what resolution is first. So magnification is basically uh, making things bigger. So um, making things look bigger than what their uh, actual size is. And resolution, on the other hand, is where is the ability to distinguish between two very close objects as two separate objects. So, for example, in this case, um, the objects are meant to be two separate objects. Well, in this case, they're seen as a, a one object which is together. So this would um, this would be very low resolution, where in this case, this is somewhat better resolution. But the last one shows you the best resolution but because you can see the two very close objects as two different separate objects. Alright, so the principles of optical or the light microscope. So, the light microscope uses light to form an image. And it focuses using lens. So it uses light to form image and it focuses using lens. And then the principles of scanning or the um, transmission electron microscope, they have the same principles. So they use the electron beam. So instead of light, they have this electron beam um, which enters the specimen um, and forms an image. It sh this should be image. So in the image, the denser parts absorb more electrons and that's why they appear darker so you can tell um, which um, organelle would be more denser and which organelle would be less dense and because they use electrons um, as uh, to observe the specimen uh, electrons have a short wavelength so they give high resolution so these are the principles of SCM or the TEM microscope Alright, so now moving on to the advantages of the optical or the light microscope. Um, so it's quite cheap to use and much cheaper than the electron microscopes. That's why you uh, have probably used one in your lab. And it's quite easy to use. Uh, you don't really require any training um, compared to the electron microscopes. And you can observe live specimen um, which you won't be able to do with the electron microscopes because that would be that would be used under a vacuum and you can view the true color of the specimen All right so now the advantages of the scanning electron microscope so the scanning um, electron microscope this time so it's a it gives a high resolution and a high magnification and you can visualize uh, the 3D image um, of the uh, of the cell and of the organelles, and you can observe um, thick specimen. So, for example, the um, light or the um, the the transmission electron microscope um, can only view the thin specimen, but the scanning can view the thick specimens as well. And now the advantages of using transmission electron microscope. So this gives a high resolution again and a high magnification. And you can observe internal structure of organelles now. So um, you can focus inside what's an organelle, um, which you won't be able to do uh, in the other microscopes. So limitations of the optical or light microscope. So the light microscope again, uh, because they're cheaper, um, they have a low resolution uh, as they will be using light instead of electrons. Uh, so low resolution means you can't see the internal uh, structure of organelles like you would be able to do in the electron microscopes. And again, they have a low magnification as well. And you can, you can only observe thin specimens. So for example, in the um, and scanning electron microscope you could observe the uh, thicker specimen but you can only observe thin specimen in this 
Okay, so limitations of scanning electron microscope. So the scanning electron microscope is quite expensive um, and it's quite complex to use and, and it has a complex staining process and it must be used in a vacuum. So that's why you won't be able to see any living specimen in this as um, in a vacuum they, the specimen must be dead as there would be nowhere and and you can you won't be able to see the true color you can only see the black and white image um in the um, electron microscopes and it can also give um artifacts um which are just abnormalities and not um actual organelles which we'll come on to later and it also it's it also has a lower even though it has a very high uh, magnification and resolution, it's still lower than the transmission electron microscope's magnification and resolution. Right, so now the limitations of the transmission electron microscope. So it is again quite expensive and quite complex to use. Um, and because it's used under a vacuum, you can't uh, observe the uh, living specimen again and you can only use that to observe thin specimen so uh, unlike the um, scanning electron microscope where you could observe the thicker specimens you, in this you can only observe the thin specimen and it, again it can produce um, abnormal abnormalities or artifacts and and this gives a 2d image it cannot give a 3d image and um, everything is in 3d uh, but this can't give a 3D image like the scanning electron microscope. And again, it gives a false color and um, basically the black and white image. All right, so you need to know how to prepare a temporary mount. And this has come up before as three or even four markers. So make sure you learn this well. So basically what you do first is you obtain a thin section of a specimen. So for example, if it's a leaf, and you would um, get a thin section of, of the leaf and then what you would do is you would add a drop of water on to the co slip so the co slip that you'll be using and the glass slip and um, which you will put the specimen in and uh, so you would put a you would add a drop of water and you would float the specimen on top of the uh, drop of water and then you would um, add drop of stain so stain depends on what the specimen is so you can for example use iodine uh, for plants for the leaf um, and then you lower the cover slip with mounted needle um, to um, just avoid getting air bubbles so you just slowly um, lower the cover slip with mounted needle in, into the uh, microscope right so you need to know this um, this equation inside out it and um, most usually comes up um, and it, it can just uh, get you some important marks. So it's magnification is equal to image size divided by actual size. So if you if you prefer using the triangle, so image size would be on the top and magnification and actual size um, is at the bottom. Some people like to call it the I am triangle. I am so image size um, and actual size and magnification so image size at the top and then actual size and magnification at the bottom so magnification is equal to image size divided by actual size all right so you need to know how the cell fractionation and the ultra centrifugation and um, process works so uh, this is basically used to separate uh, cell components in a cell so they separate the organelles and it's based on density which we will come back to so the first step of this process is cell homogenization so you could use a blender to homogenize the cell so what this does is it basically break opens the cell so if it asks you what is cell homogenization you say it break opens the cell and then what you do is you place um, the homogenized um, the homogenized components into a cold isotonic buffered solution. So it's cold because it reduces 
the enzyme activity so organelles aren't broken down by enzymes so it basically slows down enzyme activity uh, if it's cold as you know if you increase the temperature and the activity of the um, enzymes increase so if you reduce the temperature then it would um, the en enzyme activity would reduce and it's placed in a isotonic solution and um, which would which would mean that it has the same water potential inside out so that water doesn't move in or it doesn't leave the cell so the cell doesn't shrivel or it doesn't burst and you use a we use a buffered solution and uh, so it keeps the pH constant so the enzyme is not uh, denatured because um, enzyme can easily denature if there's just a slight change in pH so that's why we use the uh, buffer solution all right so um, the third step is you filter the homogenate so you can you would do that by removing the large debris so this can even have whole cells all right so the final step is the ultra centrifugation so what you do first is you centrifuge or you spin and the the homogenate at low speeds to start off and then what this causes is the larger or the denser organelles to move at the bottom of the pellet so if this is of a homogenate if we're spinning this then this bottom um, this this bottom is called pellet and this is where the the most dense organelles um, would would go and the the upper bit is called the super uh, natant and this is where the less dense organelles would stay so it would stay there and the denser one would go at the bottom which is called the pellet and the pellet is where the denser organelles such as the nuclei would go okay so what you then do is you remove the pellet and you centrifuge and the supernatant so the uh, lighter the less dense and um, the less dense leftover and uh, you would centrifuge or spin that at higher speeds and then you would repeat at higher and higher speeds until the organelles you want are separated and the separation occurs in order of density so for example the nuclei being the most dense would uh, separate first as it would form the pellet first and then the chloroplast and the mitochondria then the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and then the Golgi apparatus and then the ribosomes and um, being the least dense okay so you you require to know a bit about the artifacts so these are basically uh, distortions or abnormalities um, in the cell they're not organelles however um, the there was a considerable period of time until the scientist community uh, distinguished between artifacts and cell organelles so these uh, scientists um, for a long time and um, thought that the artifacts were organelles however they weren't and for example these would be artifacts so so the scientists thought that these were um, some kind of organelles and because they kept um, reoccurring um, but um, they were reoccurring because um, the scientists uh, were breaking or uh, bursting um, some any and any other organelles which would cause the organelles for example let's say you have the mitochondria um, during staining that might have broken uh, or burst and it would have looked like a, a artifact in for example in the picture and this caused the scientist scientists to think that oh this this is an organelle and it took quite a lot of time to realize that this was just a fault and it wasn't it wasn't any organelles